went to Warsaw with the belief, oh, I have an exhibition opening, I have to give a speech, I prepared a nice speech, I was dressed nicely, and when I came to this gallery, waiting for a normal gallery public, you know, people who are interested in art to come, I had a very healthy shock because that wasn't a normal exhibition opening. The first was, there were so many people, but they were all survivors from Majdanek. Hurt people, old people, triste people, very, very sad persons. And then there were people from the radio station and from the television station, and they asked me, where are the representatives from Austria? Where are the people from the Austrian government? We invited them personally, we have been at the embassy. How come nobody is here? Tell us what is the reason. And this shocked me deeply. All of a sudden I was left completely alone by my background, by my country, by the official representatives of my country. Because Majdanek was not to be talked about. This was official policy and I stepped into their policy. I, I made a tema out of something which should have been not in the open. But this I understood only later. All this was for me like a sacred situation. And then I prayed inside of my heart. I really prayed that I would find the words to speak to them and to, to thank them. Finally, I, I was thanking them for, for, for developing this humanitarian strength after having survived that horror to go back to a normal, normal life, to be able to love again, to be able to marry again, to be able to give birth to children and to bring their children up. And this was where I knew I did not enough. Uh, I did the documentation of the site, but I must go and meet them. I must ask them these original witnesses and I will make a forum for them. I will make an artwork, in this moment it was clear, where I will give way to them, where they will have a podium to speak what they had witnessed and what they survived. So this was actually the moment where I prepared myself to do the work Survivors on Life. And I wanted to have to make it only between Poland and Austria, to to make uh, to in, make interviews with the Polish survivors, and make 50 year younger Austrians on their side, so that the old survivors could teach the young Austrians. But in 1993, I was invited to come to the ministry, and I was asked to make my project larger, and to engulf also the problematic which Austrians evoked in Holland, a country where I didn't have any connections to and so I said I can't do this, I have no connections, I don't know people, I don't know situations. Go to Simon Wiesenthal, he will teach you, he will advise you and then you will do it, you will see. And we will guarantee all the financial needs you will have to realize the project. I went to Simon Wiesenthal and this old man was crying and the tears were running down and streaming down his face. And he says, he said, please, Eva Chong Fuchs, do this project, go to Holland. I cannot give you money, but I give you my name. You everywhere where you call on people, tell that I protect your project and they will open the doors for you. And so I started to work on a very big scale of exhibition. I decided then, okay, then it will be 500 survivors, 500 people all together. It will be 250 survivors. I will try to find them. And I will travel through all these countries and I will ask people, I will find people, I was sure.
so in 1994, I did all the research work. I traveled during a couple of months, more than 50,000 kilometers. I had a tiny little mobile uh, darkroom with me, just black plastic sheets. And wherever I stayed overnight, I developed my 6x6 films to be sure that I, I was able, uh, beside all my emotional stress, uh, to, to have done it correctly, technical-wise, with my hustle blood. I was very lucky. I met so wonderful people. And it was, it was a good start with me. It was miraculous because the people, everybody, every single person trusted me. They didn't know who I was and they didn't know in which context I will use what they give me. The life stories, their statements, their name, their places of birth. And still they, they had so much trust and I, I tried to, to meet this trust. Ich überlebe mit Nachbarskindern lautlos im Erdkeller. Dann Flucht zu den Partisanen in der Winterkälte. Von Bunker zu Bunker muss raffiniert werden, um den Zugriff älterer Männer abzuwehren. Und komme zu einer Familie. Schläge, Streit, hartes Aufwachsen auch nach dem Krieg. Diskriminierung wegen Volkszugehörigkeit. Ich erinnere mich in der frühen Kindheit, der Lieder der Mutter. Nun lebt in meiner Familie Freude und Pussy Sara zaświadcza o naszej postawie. Zasadzone zostaje drzewo i przyznają nam medal sprawiedliwych wśród narodów świata. A ja też urodziłem się w rejonie Witebska, by jako jedno z niewielu dzieci przeżyć Majdan. Dzięki tej, która nas uratowała, znowu znalazłam życiową odwagę i pracę. Mam wokół siebie troje dzieci, sześcioro wnuków, jednego prawnuka, lecz z pokropieczeństwami wspomnień pozostają sam. A ja przychodzę na świat więcej rodziny. Survivors in life uh, was completed in March of 1995. I'm retired and since seven years I started uh, more and more continuously to live on Mallorca. Uh, for me it was important to, to make a physical distance to the place of my own country, to the place of my own town, which made me suffer a lot. The nature uh, received me, the people received me. At the same time they receive me, they leave me also in peace. Mallorca is a burden place too. 
They expelled 400 years ago the Arabic population. And they expelled 400 years ago the Jewish population too. And many from the mainland Spain was hiding here in Mallorca. So this was a hideout for many generations. And now it seems to be a hideout for me.